Hi, this is Jimmy from The Productive Engineer, and today I'm going to show you how you can build an effective task management system inside of Notion. Notion is known as a Swiss army knife of productivity in that it is so flexible that you can do a variety of things. And one of the things that a lot of people don't think about you can actually do very well in Notion is track your tasks. The ability to create rich databases and then different views and filters based upon that data is really a powerful way of creating and tracking your tasks on a variety of levels. And I'm going to show you several approaches to how to do that in this video. Now, before we get started, if you like this video, please click the like button. It really helps me out and really helps show YouTube that the content I'm making is worthwhile. If you are interested in learning more about applications like Notion, obviously, uh, Evernote, Todoist, the Google Docs Suite, Microsoft Suite, or any other type of applications, you should really subscribe to my channel. That's all I really talk about here on my channel if you go through my videos, is how to use these applications to get things done. And if you learn, learn to, look and learn a new skill, you should really subscribe to my channel because I think you can hopefully find something that'll help you out. And lastly, if you want to be notified when I create new videos, please click the bell. Thanks. Started building our test management system in Notion. So I've gone and taken a couple of basic steps just to give us a, um, a framework for how we're going to build our solution. I'm going to take you through it real quick before we actually get around to doing it. So. I created this sort of landing page here for task management in Notion. I put an image in just to make the page look a little less boring. And I've divided it up into two sections. One is a database section, and it's going to contain our task list, our master task list specifically. And then on over here, you can see I have a couple of pages here for projects, sort of three different types of projects. and each of which are going to have tasks that are in this master database. And I'm going to show you how we, we're going to be able to customize tasks by project and have them show up in here and be able to add them in here and have them automatically populate in my master task list. So let's click on our master task list. That's where all everything's going to start. And that's going to be the source of all our data. When we build this system, and one of the great reasons why Notion is awesome for task management is you can build a master task database. And what that master task database will do is allow you to basically put all, have a, a central repository for all your tasks and then be able to build customized views called linked databases uh, for each of your projects and really be able to see what you need to see in the moment, add that add the content in and have it auto populate back to the master database. So let's get started with building this master da database. So as you can see at this page, it's very basic. It just as a, it has a title, it has an image, it has an icon. And what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're going to create a table, an inline table here. And before I get started here, if, I'm going to do some basic table stuff here and some linked database stuff. I actually have a video on linked databases and tables that you should check out. I'm going to link it above. Um, if you need more information, you really want a good primer on how to do linked databasing and create tables and really sort of maximize the power of that. But for now, um, we're going to create a pretty uh, simple task table. We'll call this our sample task list. And we'll come here and we'll change the, the first um, the column here will make it our task, right? And we'll just leave it as title for now. That's fine. We'll have tags. Uh, I think that we'll leave that because it, that's a good way to sort of be able to filter your data. You can have a task that can have multiple ta tags on it and then a bunch of tasks that have different tags and then you can potentially use tags as a filter criteria in the future. So we'll leave that in there. I'm going to change this files one. I'll call this reference documentation because sometimes when you have a task, what you might want to have, you might want to attach like a PDF of, or an image, or a manual, or, you know, like a sales brochure or something. So for example, like one of the projects we have in this tutorial is around kitchen re renovation, and you might have a couple of brochures for our, uh, various kitchen types that you might have, or, you know, ideas. Then we're going to add another one. We're going to create this as a... Uh, a selection and we're going to call this priority because obviously one of the first things you want to have is um, how you know what's how, what's the priority of each task so tasks are going to be like urgent some of them are going to be high medium low or no priority even so that's always good to have maybe we'll do a status right 
is the project complete? Uh, the task complete, excuse me. Is it, so we'll make that a selection. Oops, if we can make that a selection, try it again. Okay, we'll scroll here to the left a little bit here. And um, next one, let's say we'll do owner. And we'll make that a person. Because a lot of times, in this case, I have a personal plan. So it's obviously just going to be me. So it's going to always be me and the owner. But let's say if you're using Notion collaboratively, collaboratively with others, and this is a shared page, you might have multiple people that could potentially be doing these tasks. And it's always good to have an owner. And this way, you could it becomes another piece of filter criteria that you can use if you wanted to later create your own little link database back to the master task list that says, hey, um, show me all my tasks. And then you can just pull that list down. Let's do date created and come here. And let's do created time. Because sometimes you want to catch everything within a certain day that was created within a certain day. You also potentially want to have the date it was created and create you the date you actually have a due date. Uh, so we'll do a due date here just to see, you know, because that gives you an idea of the windows of how long everything takes. And we'll do a date format there. We'll come next and do uh, project. Because obviously you can have multiple projects within your task list. In, this, in our tutorial, we have, I believe, three task uh, projects. But we are, you know, you might have, in, you know, your personal life, you might have your work life, you might have some side projects you're doing, you might have some educational stuff that you're doing, or maybe some charity work or some other things that you're tracking. And you might want, any way you want to kind of be able to put them into little categories. Uh, in this case, I'm calling it projects. So it could be categories or whatever you want it to be. The key is to really sort of carve it up in a way, in ways that make sense for you and your workflow. And we're going to say that is a selection. Well, I could try that again. <laughs> Seem to be missing uh, missing my touch targets here. Uh, selection. There we go. Next, we'll go to estimated time to complete. And I'll put minutes in the parentheses here and make this a number. And then we'll put actual time to complete and also make that a number. You would say this is maybe going a little deep. I like to typically track my projects and my tasks because I want to learn how I, I'm horrible at estimating. I think a lot of people are in the boat, same boat I am. I'm horrible at estimating how long it's going to take me to do something. Sometimes it takes me shorter, but a lot of times it takes me longer. And that could really be detrimental if I overload my day. And the only way for me to get better at this is to actually track the time I think it's going to take to how much time it actually took. And I can start seeing my gaps. I can start adjusting the way I estimate time. So when I go forward, I start committing myself to multiple tasks. It, it allows me to sort of stay in sync uh, with how much time I actually have. And I, did, I think that's everything I want to put in here. I'm just checking my list. I have a little list on the side here. Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good start, right? So that's my master task list. And I'm going to go offline and build a bunch of tasks, and I will join you back in one second. Okay, we're back. So I've populated the master task list with a handful of tasks, for two for each project, just to get something in there. So one of the things we could do, if we can go back to our task management section here, and let's say I wanted to work on my upgrade CRM system. So I click on that link, and I built a very generic page here. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to show you how to use a link database. So in this section under project tasks, I have typically break down, this is what I always do with my projects, is I have sort of two link databases I have at a minimum. I have more of it than these normally, but these are the two I always have. Tasks to be completed. These are the ones that are obviously the tasks I have not finished yet. And I have a separate table that shows me all the tasks I've completed. And that sort of gives me an idea of where I am in the project. So the way I do this is I come in under task to be completed. I can just type slash link. And then here you'll see under database, the create link database uh, option. You click that. And it's going to bring up a list of your databases. And I'm just going to scroll to sample task list, because that's the one that we're using. 
And when I do that, you can see that my database filled in here. Now, this is a bad column here, so I should, um, but we can fill that in in a minute. Um, now, obviously, I'm in my CRM system, so I don't want to see things that are not from that project. So what I'm going to do is I can come here to this ellipses. If you hover over your uh, table or database here, you, you'll see that an ellipses appears, uh, a line here shows up and an ellipses is on it. You can just click on the ellipses and you can go to filter. And now I'm going to create a filter and then add a filter. And I'm going to go down to where project is and then CRM upgrade. Because that's the only things I want to see are things that are filter upgrade. Now, this is my stuff to be completed. So I'm actually going to add a second filter where project is CRM upgrade and status is not completed. Now, it doesn't change anything here because the all the tests that I had that I pre-populated, none of them were marked as completed. I'm going to show you what happens when you mark when complete. And it'll, actually, I can do that right now. So I'll scroll over to status here. And let's say this one is supposed to be in progress. Let's say I come over here and I change it to completed. Now, it disappears, right? So I go back and I already have the one task. So let's come down here to my completed tasks. Do the same thing as last time, slash link, click on link database, scroll down to sample task list. And as you can see here, it has, of course, now I just added another line. Um, but as you can see, I have my task database here, but I don't want to see all of this. So again, I'm going to hover over it. I'm going to come over here, click the ellipses, click on filter. Add new filter, and this filter is going to be pretty similar. I'm going to start off the same way. Project is CRM upgrade. I'm going to add a second filter, and status is instead of is not like last time, is complete. And as you can see, now that one that we marked earlier that was complete shows up here. So Let's say, you know, I can come in here and move these around a little bit. So I just put in my estimate. Let's say my estimate was 480, but let's say it only took me 360. All right. Of course. And then there you go. And now I have my list of items here in my database that are that are completed. And then <laughs> if I can learn how to talk. And here, these are the tasks I still have to work on. So let's say I'm in here working on my project page and I say, you know what, one of the things I need to do is I need to set up meeting with vendor A, uh, right? I'm going to say I think that's going to take me maybe 30 minutes to do. And let's say I need to do that on the 16th. That was actual time. I actually have it in the wrong spot. <laughs> let's put it over here in estimated time. Oh. If I can tab over 30, you know what? Let me just move this. Make it a little easier. Um, Cause one of the nice things that you can do in these linked databases, is I can rearrange the columns the way I want them without messing up my master database. And those, all the fields are there. It's fine. And I can come in here and say, you know what? I'm, it's still me as the owner. Let's say it's a uh, high importance. And let's say that one is not started. And let's add some tags, CRM, meeting. And there we go. So now I have my new item added. Now I'm going to show you something that's really cool. Because this is a view of the master database, if I go back to my master task list, set up meeting with vendor a now shows up as an option here so it's really cool um that when you add something to your your um like database view it automatically updates your task list 
So now you have a running list of all your stuff. And we're going to show you some cool views that we'll do a little bit later on in the video once we uh, show you some other little tasks here. So let's go back and let's say I'm working in learning to code. And here, in this case, this is more of an educational self-improvement type page where you may have a goal, in this case, to teach yourself to code. You have your rationale. You may have some images or some uh, motivational things here. When I, let's say you wanted to add an image in here. You can come in, type slash image, click image. And this is something like a coding, let's go programming, see what it comes up with, All right? And let's say you want to be some like this dude. <laughs> Three screens, they're all really white, but <laughs> let's move that up here. And you know, you can customize your page to be maybe some inspirational quotes or whatever you want to do. And you know, same thing here. I have open steps and completed steps, and we'll do the same thing here. So type slash link, choose link, create link database, choose our master list. It populates, hover over our table, click the ellipses, go up to filter, add filter, add filter again, where project is learning to code. And another filter and status is not completed. Link, there we go. Scroll, choose it. It creates filter by clicking on the ellipses. Filter, filter, filter. And let's go to where project is learning to code. And second filter using the and rather than the or, not the or. You want both of these to be true. Project is not. Oh, not project. Oh man, this is what happens when you try to go fast, too fast. Status, excuse me, is completed. So yes, I almost messed myself up there. But basically what this is saying is, just like the last one, all my non-completed tasks that are for my project learning to code will show up here. All my ones that I've completed will show up down here. And again, let me just to, to prove that out, let's just come over here to status. Let's say it's not started. Let's mark this one as completed. As you can see, it disappeared from this table view. It came down to this table view. And now you'll see it's marked completed, as you can see right here. So this is one of the big reasons why I like, when I manage my projects in Notion, I like how, I like Notion because it's so customizable. I could do a bunch of different things and get really complex. So one of the things you can do is say I wanted to have another view here, create link database, sample link database. Let's give it a title by coming down here saying heading one, call it urgent steps. Urgent steps. Wow, well, learn how to spell jump. Urgent steps, right? I'll take that and I can drag it up. I can drag it up, put it above here. Okay, so we've added this urgent steps table. So now, as you can see, I have everything in here. So what we want to do is filter this down to a couple of different things here. Uh, we want to filter it down by project. We want to make sure that we wipe it. We don't count all the completed items, right? Because those are the ones that where we really, you know, once they're complete, I don't, they're not urgent anymore, they're done. And then lastly, we want to check the ones that are urgent. So what we'll do is we'll come in here, create a filter. And what we'll do is click add a filter where project is learning to code. Add a second filter, but this time, instead of choosing add a filter, we're going to choose the add a filter group. And I am, what filter groups are is allows you to create a multi-level filter system. And I'm going to show you a little bit how to do it here. But if you're interested in learning how to use filters, and I really recommend that you learn how to use them because it really makes your ability to use tables and databases in Notion that much better, much that much more powerful. I'm going to link the video up above. You should check it out. But add a filter group. 
So this is saying where project is learning to code and it in whatever conditions in this box. So this box here, right? So the first thing I want to say is where the status is not completed. I'm going to add a separate filter here, a regular filter inside this uh, filter group. I'm going to change it to and, and priority is urgent. So right now you can see I don't have any urgent tasks, but let's say I came up here to my open steps task and I come over here and right now it's marked as a medium. And let's say I come in here instead and say urgent. Now you should notice a couple of things happen. Obviously it changes to urgent up here if I can scroll this back, but it also adds it to my urgent steps view. So now I actually have multiple views here of the same master table, um, the master task list that I created earlier. So now I can have my urgent, I can have things within the next three days, everything that's due today. And I'm going to do a couple of those on a broader scale in a couple of minutes in the video, uh, but let's go back. So now let's look at our kitchen renovation ID option here. And here, this one's a little different because it's more idea oriented, right? Because when you're doing a kitchen reno, a lot of times we haven't done one, but we're saving up to do one. That's why this is in here. <laughs> We've been saving for quite a while, you know, and we're going to probably be saving for a little while longer before we actually start doing things. But, you know, a lot of times you have an idea board and this is actually a gallery view here of a table. So I actually have, this is a gallery where you can actually have images. Think of it as like an idea board. And I actually have another video, I'll uh, we'll link it up above, that takes you through all the ins and outs of how to use galleries to sort of enhance your tables and enhance your Notion pages and how to use them. They're really good visual, think of those like pin boards or idea boards or dream boards, really powerful in that way. And as you can see here, when you're doing a kitchen reno, you get these ideas, you're, you're browsing online, you grab some, you know, you see a bunch of different ideas. Maybe you're, maybe you're at um, Ikea and you see this beautiful kitchen, you take a picture of it, you come home, you put it into your Notion dream board here and you know, you just go forward, but let's get to what we're looking to do here. So I'm going to come down here, scroll a little bit and I created a project tasks section, open and completed. We're going to do this one last time, make it a little boring. So I'm going to try to rush through it here, create a link database. I'm going to select my database. You should know what to do by now. Hover over your link database, click the ellipses, click filter. We're going to build a very simple filter here where our project is the kitchen reno. Add the second filter and the status is not completed. And as you can see, both of those are not completed. I'm going to create my completed one here, even though I'm not going to have anything in it. Uh, so again, link, create link database, sample database, hover over again, click the ellipses. I'm sorry, this is getting a little monotonous, but you know, repetition is the mother of skill, they say. Uh, add a filter where project is, oh my gosh, kitchen renovation and status is complete. And as you can see, that doesn't show up. We'll come up here, we'll mark one of these as complete, just so you can see that it works. And as you can see, it does, one, one gets eliminated here from this, all the open tasks, it drops down here into the completed task. I think this is like an archive of all the tasks you've done. And let's say the actual time, estimated time complete was, let's say it was 140, let's say it takes longer as an example, right? So this is really powerful. Again, I know it sounds like I'm being a little monotonous here, but the capability, I'm just trying to show you what's possible here with these, uh, with how to manage tasks. You can get way more complicated or be way more simple. I want to just kind of strike a, a note in the middle to show you enough to give you ideas on how you might be able to manage your tasks in Notion. So, We'll go back here. We filled everything out. We have our master task list. As you can see, it's populated with everything in it and everything is up to date, right? So what we could do next is let's say I come down here 
and I want to create a new view here, right? So actually, you know, let's let's do this better. Let's do this differently. Let's go back to task management and let's make a new page. Let's call this urgent. Create a page. And we'll call this urgent tasks. Because maybe we want to have a table that has all our urgent tasks. Yep, there, let's be a little more creative. Urgent or high priority tasks, right? Make it a little more complicated. So sometimes you want to know what's urgent and high. A lot of times you're, you're splitting hairs, right? So let's do this link. Let's do a heading real quick. Yeah, actually, we have the heading. So let's do slash link. Scroll down, create link database. Once again, go to sample. And here, we're not going to be filtering our project because we don't care what the project is, right? We just want a very simple filter. And all this filter is going to do, add a filter group. We're going to start with a filter group, and I'm going to show you why in a minute, where priority is urgent or priority is high at a filter and where the status is not complete. So what this filter does, and this is a little tricky one admittedly, is the first thing it's doing is it's checking to see if the priority is either urgent or high. And if it is, that's the first part of it has to be complete, but because we're using the and, both sides of this has to be true. Both this part has to be urgent or high, and the status cannot be completed, because I don't want to see urgent completed tasks, because that doesn't really mean anything to me. So when I click that off, that definitely has an impact here. You can see that only I have three tasks here that are either high or urgent, and they're, either, they're not complete. And now we can go back. You know, let's go back in there and make it a little, let's add an icon. Let's do, change the icon to maybe an alarm or alert. Here we go. I like this one. So as you can see, they here now have an icon just for sake of completeness. Let's say I wanted to add another one so I can do another page. And let's call this one today. It's going to show me everything that's due today, right? So I can do slash linked click it, sample, sample, sample the task list, and then I can come in here. And again, I want to filter out everything that's completed, right? So I'm going to create a filter. This is going to be a simple filter where status is not complete. And due date is today. <laughs> That's simple, right? So right now, none of them are due today. But let's go back to my task. Let's make one of them due today. Uh, so I'll go to my master task list. Let's look for this one that's in progress right up here. Let's change this to today. And then go back. Let's look at my today view. And now you can see I have that task in here do today. So sometimes you want to have a much like any other task manager that you use, there's always a today view, right? So this is sort of replicating that. And let's give this an icon of uh, let's say calendar. Let's do that one. And go back. So now I have urgent or high priority tasks. I have my today tasks. Let's say I want to have Let's do one more. Let's say I want to see everything in the next seven days. So let's do a page. Let's call this one this week. Slash link. Link database. Sample. Start spelling it so it cuts down the, the choices. It's going to pop up here. And let's go to the ellipses. Filter. And add a filter. I'll we'll start with add a filter where status is not complete. Add a filter and due date is within 
the next week. And that's going to show me everything within the next seven days. And the nice thing about it is because it's doing that, it's as every day progresses, this will change based upon the due dates that I have here, right? So it's a really cool way of doing that. And let's do another calendar. So let's do this one. Just keep it different. Come back in here. And now you can see. This looks weird here. It's a little gap. It's kind of bothering me. Uh, as you can see here, now we've got quite a nice system here. So I can add items to any of these projects and auto updates by task list. I can create views both within the project as well as overall views cross project. So now we've really sort of created a system that allows us to really manage our tasks on a very granular level. You can go as deep or as small as you want. You might only have one project. You might have 10 projects. Uh, good luck to you if you have more than 10. But now you can really sort of start filtering your, your content on a variety of things. Other filters you could create are include everything that's on a computer. So sometimes like there's a bunch of things that you, you, know, you might have to do with email or you might want to be doing your computer or things that you might have to do when you're in town. You can create views of that. And then that way, when you're on the go or you're about to leave, you can just pull that list up and then you know those are the things you're going to bang out while you're sitting there. And that, as you can see, I had my estimated time to complete. I might have a, let's say I have something that's, I have a half hour. Uh, I could do a filter on everything that takes me 30, I believe is going to take me 30 minutes. And then I can just bang, if I have that half hour, I can just bang that out, right? So by creating that filter. So, it really gets powerful here and it allows you to really get the things you need to get done by being able to see the things that you can do in the moment. And that's really the, what the best task managers do. Well, I hope this video was helpful for you. If again, if you like this video, please click that like button because it really helps me out. If you want to see more videos on how to and learn how to use these apps like Notion and others to improve the way you work and get things done quicker and easier and more efficiently subscribe to the channel because that's what all i talk about if you check my channel out you'll see it's nothing but tutorials it's all tutorials all the time here at this point so um, check it out i have quite the extensive notion playlist and i also have one more video if you're just getting started with notion and you want a beginning to end video to teach you everything you need to know to become proficient in Notion, check out my beginner's guide to Notion. I'm going to link it up above. It's the last video I'm linking up here today, I promise. And it will teach you everything you need to know to be proficient. And then you can fill in the gaps or, or expand your knowledge on individual areas by checking out the other videos I've done, as well as other videos on YouTube, obviously. But it's a really good primer to get you, by the time you, as soon as that you know nothing about Notion, when you sit down to watch it, and by the end, it taught you everything about tables and views and all the different... Uh, blocks that you can use inside Notion to really power, super charge your productivity system. And lastly, uh, if you want to be notified when I release videos, please click the bell. Thanks.